So early prevention and detection of child abuse is an essential component to ensuring a child's um, well-being both in physical and mental health. We know that child abuse can have a host of very serious negative impacts on a child's emotional well-being, such as the development of depression and PTSD, as well as on their physical well-being. While addressing child abuse after the fact is essential and very important, prevention is more likely to be effective than after the fact intervention. Pediatrics clinics offer an ideal setting um, to both um, detecting and intervening in the case of child abuse. And this is for numerous reasons, but it includes the fact that the pediatrician has regular ongoing contact with children and their families. This contact allows them, pediatricians, to be aware of some of the factors that we know are associated with child maltreatment. And these include a host of parental factors, such as parental depression, parental substance use, and being in a situation that includes domestic violence. Unfortunately, many children are not identified by their pediatricians at being, as being at risk for maltreatment. This is for a number of reasons, which includes um, lack of clinician comfort in discussing these very sensitive topics, the lack of routine use of screening tools, and even lack of training to discuss issues as sensitive as child abuse. Here at Metropolitan Pediatrics, we've taken these factors into account to develop a team approach that can be helpful in identifying the risk factors associated with abuse, as well as having access to intervention after child abuse has occurred. So I've been working in the arena of child abuse uh, in some capacity for the past 20 years or so of my career. And one of the, um, I think, frustrations for me has been sort of feeling like I was always in a reactive role versus a preventative role. So I was always in the role of sort of treating uh, children in the aftermath of child abuse um, or evaluating children maybe who are in foster care. Uh, due to uh, reasons of child maltreatment. And it wasn't really until I came into a primary setting uh, that I felt like I could serve um, in the capacity of prevention versus kind of this reactivity or picking up the pieces afterwards. And I feel like the team approach that we take here at Metropolitan Pediatrics lends itself really, really well to that. Uh, in the sense that we're able to wrap around this web of support around these families uh, during really stressful times in their lives. So for example, uh, when new babies come into the, into the world, we, um, we follow those, those children very, very closely, of course, and during their initial checkups at our clinic, we're screening um, for any signs of maternal depression. Um, so at, at a two-month checkup, for example, we do a screening, a maternal depression screening. We uh, look at those scores and we determine, based on that, how much support we may need to plug in for that family during that stressful time. So support could be anything from plugging in our care manager um, to provide some assistance with maybe transportation for this family if they have financial um, strains that they're dealing with, transportation to appointments, to other things. Uh, it could mean that one of our psychologists, me or one of our other psychologists, gets plugged in uh, to provide some, some support for the family in other ways. So I may come into the clinic appointment uh, with the, the baby and the mother and talk with the mother about some things that she can use, some tools that she could use at home to decrease stressors. Then we follow up with these families again at six months uh, to sort of determine how they've done over that period of time and see what other services we may need to wrap around that family, again, to decrease those stressors that may result in uh, child maltreatment um, or other uh, significant effects on those children.